I really, I really enjoyed this question. Jared from Austin, Texas. He writes, in a sermon you've preached about trusting in people and empowering people at all, all at a high level, you said that if there isn't a Judas for every 12 people you're investing in, you aren't trusting enough. Mm -hmm. I love this statement, think this needs to be lived out, but my struggle is trying to envision this as a senior pastor. Basically, how would you envision a pastor walking this out? Yeah, and you know, I, I think that when I said, unless you have one Judas in every 12 people, you know, you're you're not trusting enough. I Everybody think. Everybody on their staff is like, "Am I the Judas?" Am yeah. I the Judas? Well, <laughs> you, so, sometimes I, I think that I'm prone to exaggerate a, a example to make yeah, a, it's point. a point. Yeah, totally. But the well, point, let's, yeah, let's, the point let's, is, is that empowering cultures, uh, um, they create greatness in people. You know, none of the disciples. That I, there's no record that the disciples ever argued over who was the greatest before they met Jesus. You know, we have Peter and John yeah. uh, and James all working for their father. Now, maybe they did, but it seems unreasonable. You, you know, Banning, we were around here with 340 employees. I don't see anyone walk. I, I, I haven't been in a single argument. I haven't, I haven't tried to solve an argument between people. It's like, well, I'm greater than he is, and he doesn't believe that, and it, you know. Yeah, so, fine. so something happened when you something happens when you hang out with Jesus, and and one of the things that happens is that there is a sense of destiny and purpose that is so powerful in your life that it leads to this conclusion. Like, if I am, if I am who God says I am. If I am really a son of God, if I'm really a child of God, if I'm really a royal priest, there's this revelation that comes to you that I was born for greatness. And all I'm saying is that as leaders, we want to develop a culture where that when people humble themselves, they can be exalted. So we teach a lot about humility, you know, I've heard many messages and preached many messages on humility. How many messages have you heard on the reward for humility? Yeah, totally. Which is greatness. If you it's allow... the second half of the verse. Exactly. It's the reward for it. It's yeah. like for the joy set before me during the cross. Yeah. It's like if you humble yourself, you'll be exalted. Yeah. It's mentioned four times in the Bible. So the point is, is that if we develop a culture, now we're talking about a culture, yeah. where people can become great, the, the, the challenge in that culture, the weakness of that culture, is that people can hang themselves. People can they, can, they can get arrogant, they can get prideful, that can happen in any culture, but I mean, yeah. we're 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 giving impetus for that for people to become well, great. I, yes, write books, you know, travel, be awesome, or whatever their thing. Those is, things, you know? those people can be promoted in that culture. Exactly. Before, before, yeah, but they can be promoted to this place. Yes, because you believe in them. Yeah. Exactly, and so what I'm saying, what I, the point I was really trying to get across there is that, you know, every culture has its weaknesses. If I if I am the leader and I keep everybody little, I'm like, okay, so you know, I have never had a leader fall. Well, <laughs> how could a leader fall in your culture? At least, how would you ever know about it? Because you're so controlling and you yeah. punish anyone who had a mistake, who ever makes a mistake. So if they are, if they are, if they are going to fall, you're not going to know about it. I mean, it, it, it's almost like you're saying that. It's not as much like if I, I you know, I'm going to have a Judas with every 12. Yeah, that was that, a little bit of a, well, a no, metaphor but I, didn't but, work. But the point, no, I think the point for me is well taken in that you have to be able to create an environment of empowerment and freedom. Yes. Where it, it's possible that yeah. Judas can be in your midst. Exactly. Yeah, that's what I'm, yeah and, that, that makes sense. And what I'm saying is, is that the... The structure that you need to sift out Judas's, and this was this was my point in yes, teaching. It's, I think it's the structure that you need to keep people from becoming Judas's 
also keeps people from becoming peers. Yeah, totally. Because, you know, both denied Christ. And they probably look the same in <laughs> they look some the stages. Same. They did look the same. Yeah. And so, you know, we have Peter who denied Christ, but repents. And we have Judas who denies Christ and creates his own redemption by hanging himself. Yeah. But those, those were growing alongside of each other. It's wheat and tear. Exactly, in the yeah. same culture. So, you know, the point I was really trying to make is that create a culture. Listen, any, any kind of leadership culture you, you develop is going to have its problems. Yeah. We want, we want the kind of problems where, where we're developing world changers. The problems that are based around freedom and empowerment. Exactly. Not control. Not control. Yeah.